Welcome back to AP Physics C, Unit One for Mechanics, uh, Kinemax. Here we're going to talk. About, we're going to combine two topics, right? We're going to combine free fall and projectile motion. The reason why we combine these is because part of projectile motion is just simply free fall. Okay, so <clears throat> free fall: an object falling without air resistance or friction. I should say or. Um, is defined to be in free fall, right? So what does that mean? That means the only thing acting upon it is, or the only reason why it's being accelerated is the acceleration due to gravity, G, which you can remember has a value of 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, what we can do is the, the cakes, right? The, those equations we talked about in the last video can be rewritten with, with the G replacing the acceleration variable. Now, this is only in the vertical direction. Right, because there is no acceleration in the x direction, right? So the way we think about this, right, is we can split up our equations. We rewrite them with all of our new ideas of g and a, okay? But for the vertical motion of projectile motion, we have, we're in free fall. So I can take those cake equations, put little subscripts, Right, and simply do like plus GT. I can take, um, let me put, change this to a Y since we are talking vertical. Okay, so plus GT squared. In fact, this G will always be negative. So you can actually, if you wanna make it even easier, instead of just putting GT or one half GT squared, put minus GT or minus one half GT squared. And then you have the equation with no time. All right. And so these are what we call our free fall equations, right? So all I've done is wherever I see an A, I've replaced it with a G. Now, projectile motion is essentially free fall, but adding in a constant velocity motion as well. So um, so projectile motion, motion of an object thrown or projected into the air subject only to acceleration because of gravity. Um, objects experience this motion are called projectiles, um, while their path is called a trajectory. So a football, baseball, like kicking a football, uh, hitting a baseball, throwing a baseball, bow and arrows, right? Um, those are all what we call projectiles. Now, the vertical motion of projectile motion is free fall. And the horizontal motion is simply constant velocity. So the only acceleration, again, will be experienced in the vertical direction. So our horizontal motion is a constant velocity motion. Well, what does that mean? There is no acceleration. So our equations become even simpler where we say Vx equals Vox. And um, delta x is equal to Vox t right because all i do is i basically take the cake right the cakes and take away all the a values okay or take away it said an a equals a zero right now there are three types of free fall i didn't talk about this part straight up so when it comes to free fall right you have thrown down thrown up and then you have dropped. Okay. Um, now, if we do projectile motion, the initial velocity in the x direction is VO cosine theta, and the y direction is VO sine theta. So, step one is often breaking apart the initial velocity vector into components and then figuring out from there. All right. So, let's look at an example. So, we have a fireworks display. All right, we're shooting at uh, initial speed, right? So here's our initial velocity, 70 meters per second at an angle of 75 degrees. Um, it's time just to, to, for the fuse to ignite the shell just above the highest point, okay? And we're going to find all this stuff about. 
right? So A, calculate the height at which the shell explodes. B, how much time passes between the launch of the shell and the explosion. C, what is the horizontal displacement of the shell when it explodes? And then D, what is the total displacement from the point of launch to the highest point? All right, so let's do A, okay? So really the first thing I want to do is I want to do B, O, So I want to break apart the that initial velocity vector into x and y. So I'm going to do vox equals vo cosine theta, voy equals vo sine theta. So it's going to be 70 cosine 75. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. Right? So it's 18.1 horizontally and then vertically. going to be 67.6 right and these are meters per second all right part a calculate the height at which the shell explodes so when you're in a path right of an upward motion at the highest point your v at your vy is going to be zero so we can use or not meters per second square just meters per second so we can use that in the sense that I can take the time, the equation with no time. Okay, so we're going to look at the vertical direction, right? So these will have little y's and say that this vy squared is going to be zero. So now I just simply solve for delta y. So delta y is going to be negative voy squared over 2g. And it's okay you have a negative because that g is negative, right? And so I'm going to say, negative 67.6 squared over 2 times negative 9.81. So 67.6 squared divided by 19.62. And that's going to give us a height right, of 233 meters. So that's our answer to part A, right? Part B, how much time passes between the launch of the shell and the explosion? So you can also, you can use the simple equation, right? But I can, I need to rewrite it in, um, in free fall, right? So again, not zero. And so this is going to be T equals negative VOI over G. So negative 67.6 divided by negative 9.81. Again, it's okay. It's negative because you have negative divided by negative. I'll split 6.76. And that's going to give us a time of 6.89 seconds. So that's A. This is B. Now C is going to be what is the vertical dis or horizontal displacement. Well, that's just going to be delta X is equal to VOXT. So we're going to take 18.1 and multiply it by 6.89. All right, and that's going to give us our horizontal displacement of 125 meters. All right, sometimes you'll, this will be referred to as the range, okay, especially if it's the full path. Now, the display, what is the total displacement? So our total displacement, let's call it S, right, is going to be our delta X I hat plus delta Y J hat. Okay, remember that's vector notation. So essentially we go up 125 meters, or sorry, to the right 125 meters and up 233 meters, all right? And so over here, all we simply did is say, okay, at that point, right? Let me draw this a little bit better to understand it, right? So at that point, so if this is our initial position, we went out 125 meters and we went up 233 meters, but we're not looking for the components in part D. We're looking for that piece. Okay. So we need to find the magnitude by doing Pythagorean theorem and then the angle by doing the inverse tangent. Okay. And so we would do 125 squared plus 233 squared 
take the square root of that, and that will give us the magnitude. <coughs> excuse me, of our displacement. So it's going to be 264.4 meters. And then the angle is going to be the inverse tangent of our y value, so 233 over our x value. So shift tangent 233 divided by 125. And that's going to give us, okay, so there is our displacement, 264.4 meters, right, which is that right there. And then the angle is going to be 61.8 degrees. Okay, so we're getting towards the end of the unit. Um, we only have a couple more slot, uh, a couple more videos. If not, we only have one more video um, where we're going to find uh, velocity and displacement from acceleration. So we're going to kind of work backwards uh, um, from acceleration up. All right, and that's going to involve calculus.